Joining us now on the KTSA Connecticut Quality Water Softeners Newsmaker Line uh, is one of our favorite people to talk to and have on this show, and it, it's it's rare, but we love uh, being able to welcome uh, Dr. Victor Davis Hansen, uh, historian and author and commentator. Uh, and Dr. Hansen, uh, welcome, and I hope you're staying well, and thanks for making time for us today. I am. Thank you for having me. You um, you've written a lot about war, and uh, you've written that the uh, coronavirus struggle is like a war; uh, that it's an invisible enemy, not one with tanks and planes and armies, but one that uh, menaces us in a lot of ways, just the same. And and President Trump has said he considers himself to be a wartime president, right? Yeah, he does, and in some ways, I think he is, given that. This is an existential threat, in theory at least, but um, he, he at least seems uh, to think so. And, and it's kind of ironic because there were certain positions, as you remember, that he embraced early on in the campaign of 2015-16 in his first three years that were very controversial. And I'm thinking now of the travel ban or the idea that a president would ban travel from a particular country for national security purposes. I think he he had detailed five at the time in 2017. Remember the uh, end of life, green lighting of drugs, that last hope drugs that he he initiated in 2018, people got very angry about, mm-hmm. thought that that was dangerous. Of course, the whole crackdown on China and the idea that it wasn't just uh, slightly cheating, but it was on a, it was nefarious and it was trying to systematically weaken us in key industries. That was very controversial. And so all of those things seem to, and then the idea of border security, et cetera, all of those things seem to have come in handy for him. And that's not to mention his support out here in California, his strident support for giving farmers water and the essential necessity of farming as much land as you can, of fracking, of exploring for oil at all costs. Um, that's really reminds us that in times of stress, we we expect the shelves to have food and our, our apartments to be warm. So one reason that he I think he's doing well in the polls is that he took prior positions and then in general uh, ideologies and philosophies that were pro-American, nationalistic, self-sufficient that are serving him well right now. And I would add to that even a couple more. That's a great list. Uh, skepticism about globalism. Uh, and globalism is a major problem right now. And then his own uh, proclivity toward cutting red tape was well underway before he began lifting all these regulations and restrictions that are allowing us to surge, uh, you know, PPEs and other kinds of production. I, I, I don't know if most politicians would have been able to make those moves as easily as he was because he was already inclined to do it. Yeah, he was, and especially his confidence in what we would call the deplorables or the irredeemables is another very strange trait that he had at a time when people were making fun of clingers or as Joe Biden called them, the dregs of society or Hillary's clingers, uh, Hillary's, excuse me, uh, deplorables and irredeemables. The people who have really shown brightest at this time are truckers, farmers, stock people, stocking shelves, the muscular classes and people that are confined in their homes, the professional classes, the media, politicians, entertainers, corporate lawyers, uh, et cetera, they don't seem to be the ones that we're relying on. When we, when our oven goes out, we want somebody from Home Depot to peer out of nowhere with it while we're in our apartment. We want the gas to go on. We want the food to be there. We want uh, a trucker to drive all night. And these were the unappreciated muscles of America that he seemed to have an uncanny instinct to focus on. Another was the Second Amendment, because out here in California, it's very strange to see these gun stores in very blue state California counties that are being have run on. And it's a mob buying frenzy. In fact, they've been shut down in some cases in Los Angeles. And that suggests to me that In times of stress and uncertainty, even liberal people want to be protected when they read accounts that the California law enforcement authorities are not going to enforce shoplifting or even assault or theft on a regular basis. And so they feel, who's going to protect me? I need to all of a sudden reappreciate my Second Amendment rights. 
It, one thing that he, President Trump, is dealing with that I don't think an FDR or a Churchill dealt with is a steady diet of uh, media coverage that is both defeatist and um, fingers pointed of blame at him. In other words, if you compare this to World War II, the bad guy would be Hitler, the bad guy would be Tojo, uh, but to our media, the bad guy is Trump. He practically held the door and waved the coronavirus into the country. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, it spiked in 1944 because that was the only year that we were in the war. There was an election, and so there was a little bit of Dewey trying to point out the misplaced decision making of FDR. But it didn't, and it was a closer election, closest of FDR's four. Mm-hmm. Churchill had a little bit after the fall of Tobruk in 1942, when um, there was a vote of no confidence. But you're right, and I think part of it is. Trump is a controversial president, and part of it is we're in an election year, 2020. But you're right about the media. They have decided that, and they've said this, and I'm not trying to put words in their mouth, that Trump is so beyond the pale that they have to suspend the pretense of disinterested coverage, that he poses an existential threat. Therefore, they either won't cover his press conferences or they're going to they're gonna have to create some type of narrative, whether it's true or not, to get him out of office. And that explains very bizarre things like blaming him for people who take a fish tank cleaner compound because it has some components uh, that are associated with malarial drugs that he's green-lighted. But, I mean, if you you could go even further than that, I mean, you had people in Hollywood making movies intentionally uh, portraying uh, the American Armed Services in a positive light, the home front in a positive light, uh, going out of their way to illustrate uh, that that Nazis were individually bad people, not just a bad ideal ideology. You know, in other words, it wasn't just that they were reporting it straight. You had an entertainment industry, and I think this is true in Britain as well. You had an entertainment industry, a publishing industry that said we feel like we're a vital wartime industry. Uh, We're dedicated to winning this thing. It wasn't even so much pro the leader, it was pro the country, right? Yeah, I think that's true. And I think, again, that the left, because Trump is so blunt and he's so successful, and he was the first president without political or military experience, he didn't win the popular vote, he shocked everybody. Nobody, Nobody on the left thought he could win. And you add all of that up, and he doesn't he doesn't take it like a Romney or a McCain or, a, or the Bushes that when you he, he's not preemptive, but when you attack him, he retaliates in kind and the left's not not used to that. And so uh, there's all of these explain why they have this antipathy for him and why in some ways, to be frank, as you point out, the coronavirus is sort of taken off where impeachment. Robert Mueller, Stormy Daniels, 25th Amendment, Emolument Clause, first round of impeachment, voting machines. We can go through them all, but it's a mechanism by the left to destroy the Trump presidency in a way that they can't do at the ballot box or they feel that Joe, Joe Biden will not be able to do. And therefore, that liberal media fusion is, is searching daily to find stories that accentuate the worst about the Trump policy. And that means that the virus is, is our reactions to it are subpar or they're inadequate or they're incompetent. And that's the news narrative. It's just overwhelming. Yeah. You're absolutely right about that. It's a it's a dangerous, uh, I think we're going to look back on it as a dangerous, dangerous decision. But, um, Professor, as always, great to talk to you. Keep up the great work with all of your writing. I hope we can have you back again soon and, and stay well. Thank you.